Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are going to be talking about the skin effect and specifically the current distribution in a trace and in the ground plane when the skin effect occurs in a transmission line. So as you may remember from some of our earlier videos on signal integrity and on losses in copper in our types of copper video, we briefly alluded to the skin effect a few times and there are some drawings that I see online that claim to show the correct distribution of the skin effect current and unfortunately some of these drawings are not always correct. So that's what we're gonna dive into today Join us as we get started. All right, so let's break down exactly what we're talking about when we refer to the skin effect current. So here is my PCB substrate. Let's just suppose for a moment we've got our ground plane or our ground pore below a trace. And then of course, this structure is a transmission line. Let me draw this a little cleaner here. So as the signal travels, there's of course a potential or a voltage that exists between the trace and the ground plane, but there's also a current. And the current and the voltage are related to the electric and magnetic field. So technically when we look at uh, how a signal travels along a trace, we often refer to the voltage and the current, but what really matters for the effects on signal integrity is actually the electric and magnetic field. Now there's this one drawing out here uh, on the internet that you will sometimes see which claims to show the distribution of current that occurs when the skin effect takes over. What is the skin effect briefly? Well, the skin effect refers to the bunching up of current around the edge of the trace when an AC signal travels along this transmission line. So when the AC signal travels along the transmission line, it causes a lot of the current to be distributed along the edge of the trace. And as the frequency of that signal increases, the confinement of this current gets smaller and smaller. So it gets confined closer and closer to the edge of the trace. Now in a perfect conductor, meaning like if copper had infinite electrical conductivity, this wouldn't occur. In fact, all of the current would be along the outer edge at all times for any frequency. Frequency wouldn't even matter at that point. But what you will sometimes see on the internet if you read guides about skin effect or losses in uh, copper on a PCB is you actually won't see this. Sometimes what you will see is you will just see people saying that the current only exists along this bottom edge of this trace. And this is actually incorrect. The current does not just exist along the bottom of the trace. It actually exists everywhere around the edge of the trace. Why is this important? What does it mean? What does it mean for the electric and magnetic field? Well, this is where we need to go back to uh, a little bit of our Electromagnetics 101 classes in order to understand why this is important and what it means for the electric field and specifically what it means for the impedance of this transmission line. So that's what we're gonna break down now. So to see why this is important, we're just gonna go back to the prototypical example that you'll see in an electromagnetics class, which is a conductive sphere and the conductive sphere has some charge that is placed on it. So let's say, just in this case, it is positive charge. Well, the electric field that is emitted or generated by the charge on this sphere always points perpendicular to the distribution of charge along this surface, or in other words, just perpendicular to this surface. So this is the electric field that's generated by all of these charges. So what does that mean for our system here in a PCB? Well, what that means is that if this picture were true, the electric field would always point essentially like this, perpendicular to the bottom edge of the trace. And then here, where we have this connected to uh, ground or defined as our reference in this case, then the electric field would always terminate at this surface. So it starts perpendicular to the bottom edge of this trace and then ends perpendicular to this plane. And this would be our electric field. Why is that important? What does that mean for the impedance of this line and what does it mean for the losses in the line? Well, in this case, if this is actually how the skin effect caused the current to be distributed in this trace, that would mean that we don't have any field out here. We don't have any field being emitted from the top edge of this trace 
or from this edge of the trace or any of that. None of that would exist. And so the result is that our impedance equation would be proportional to one over the square root of just dk, which is the dk value of our substrate. So that's what would happen if this picture were actually true. But what do we really have in a transmission line? Well, what we really have in a transmission line is that the dk value of air also matters because these two values come together to give us a dk effective value. And this is actually the value for a microstrip that determines the impedance of the line. So it's actually proportional to one over a dk effective value. And this is important because the two media together actually determine this dk effective value. So in order for this dk effective value to arise, some of these field lines have to exist in the air above this PCB substrate. So again, we're talking about a microstrip here. So these field lines would essentially come out like this off of the edge. And in order for that to occur, there has to be some charge located around the edge. In addition, we also know that there are field lines emanating from the top of the trace and eventually terminating somewhere along this reference plane. So there has to be some charge along the top edge of the trace. There will always be some charge that is distributed around the edge of this trace. Now, this is actually a question that um, I got asked when I was giving my Altium Live presentation last year, and it came up just recently again when I was reading, doing some reading online. So I felt it was important to talk about this because it really is this distribution of electric field everywhere around the trace that determines the DK effective value as well as the impedance. Now, what else do you notice about this? Well, remember, there are losses in this PCB substrate. So the losses are defined by, normally, the loss tangent. And the loss tangent is given by the imaginary part of the dielectric constant divided by the real part of the dielectric constant. Um, and normally, instead of writing epsilon sub r, uh, you guys that do digital design, you're gonna write dk. RF guys are gonna write epsilon sub r. Same thing, so don't get confused by those two different symbols. They do mean the same thing. But it is this value here that determines the losses, or at least the dielectric portion of the losses, along this line. Well, just like we have a dk effective, there is actually an epsilon sub i effective. And the reason that arises is because all of the field lines can exist in the air around this trace, and not just here, confined beneath the trace, and then terminating at this plane. That is why that previous image is actually incorrect. If you ever see it online, don't get confused. The field lines don't just exist here, they exist everywhere around the line. And that's actually important because let's say you have another line off here somewhere. Well, the electric field from this line can then induce noise on the line over here. Let's say it's in this region. And that is crosstalk. So you can have capacitive coupling or inductive coupling. Here we're talking about, again, the electric field, so the electric field will produce capacitive coupling between those two lines. The other important point here is that if this image with the electric field lines just confined in this region were true, we wouldn't have any fringing capacitance. If you actually look at the RLCG model, which I've, I've presented many times for transmission line impedance, then you will know that the capacitance is defined by this k sub g value times the dielectric constant, and then you can have some uh, dimensional quantities here if you like. But we usually just write this as like a capital k sub g. And this value is normally somewhere on the order of 3.5 to 4. Well, if you just ca calculated the capacitance of just this region, within the PCB substrate. Assuming that this incorrect picture where there's just current here is correct, then you would actually underestimate the capacitance of this transmission line. Because here for a microstrip, this aspect ratio, so the width divided by the height, so we have our transmission line width here, and then we have a height into the substrate. So I know this is getting a little messy, but we'd have a width and a height. 
This is usually about two for microstrips. So microstrips targeting 50 ohm impedance with E sub R about four, you're gonna have this ratio about two in order to hit a 50 ohm impedance. But we actually don't have a value of two here. We have a value of between 3.5 and four. So the result is that you underestimate the capacitance by about a factor of two. Half of the capacitance is actually provided by all of these other field lines around the trace. That is all I have about this topic because it is actually a very fundamental topic and I know it's kind of a physics topic, but it actually really relates to how the electromagnetic field is distributed around traces. So remember, just like Dan Beaker says, it's all about the space. The space around the trace is where the electromagnetic energy is located and that is what is being guided along this transmission line down to a receiver. All right, that's all I got for today, folks. I definitely wanted to address that little image that you see sometimes online and let you know why it is incorrect. And just remember, all about the space, not about the trace. Thanks to Dan Beaker for that. All right, everybody, make sure to hit subscribe, hit that like button, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. We love getting your questions. And of course, Send your questions on over to YouTube at allteam.com. We're gonna be doing more Q&A sessions coming up and we hope to hear from all of you. All right, thanks everybody for tuning in. And uh, last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.